today what we're hoping to cover for you guys uh, is a rundown of the system and the specs and just a generalized overview uh, and to actually display some of the uh, data that's been collected uh, with the, the Q240 LiDAR sensor towards the end of the presentation. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Daniel Murphy and let him get started. Miles, th thanks so much for that. And, and all you on the call today, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to, to spend with Miles and I here so we can chat with you a little bit about this solution in the Trinity F90 Plus and the Q240 LiDAR. Line up that we have for you all here today. Um, so as we alluded to, we'll talk about the Trinity F90 Plus and give you an intro of that drone solution. We'll talk about the Q240 LiDAR scanner. We'll go a little bit into what drones can and cannot help you with. We'll talk about some coverage and accuracy considerations. We'll talk about use cases and, and workflows from some real world data that Miles will show. And of course, as mentioned, we'll save some time at the end to cover any questions that, that might pop up um, as we're going through some of this content here. So as you, as you think of things that you'd like to ask Miles and I to address, uh, don't hesitate to, to shoot those into the chat window. Uh, or just wait until the end and, and raise those um, and, and we'll be happy to get to them. So just a very, very brief intro of me so you know who's talking at you from the other side of the, the computer screen here. I'm Daniel. I am the regional sales manager of all the surveying and mapping products in North America for quantum systems. So I have around 10 years of remote sensing and GIS experience. I earned a bachelor's and a master's in geomatics where really roughly the, the second half of my time um, there in, in the academic world was focused on remote sensing from, from purely drone platforms. So I've been in the commercial drone manufacturing industry for around seven years now, really doing a, a variety of different things and, and gaining experience across things like, of, of course, sales, support, uh, even some repairs, trainings, and logistics. So this really puts me in a good position to be um, helpful and, and to be a great partner for, for all of our customers on a variety of different topics that, that might come up. So Quantum Systems, founded all the way back in 2015, is a developer and manufacturer of electric vertical takeoff and landing technology. So just a little specifically than that, we are a global leader in both commercial and governmental small uncrewed aircraft systems. And as a supplier of this technology, we design and manufacture the aircraft hardware and then also develop the flight control software in-house that makes all of this possible. So very succinctly, quantum systems, vertical takeoff and landing drones are long endurance, fully autonomous and require absolutely no special launch and recovery equipment or uh, big wide open areas to operate from. So with all these things in mind, you might be curious about what is the driving force behind quantum systems as a company, uh, which of course alludes kind of where we're headed in the future. So said very clearly, our mission as a company is to transform decision-making through aerial data intelligence. Largely in part to the vision that I mentioned on that previous slide, stellar leadership and some really outstanding products, Quantum Systems has enjoyed you know, really impressive growth over the last few years. So specifically, over each of the last six years, we've grown over 122% annually. So we've been able to sustain this rapid growth during um, you know, recent years, despite obvious global health considerations and, and also some really significant supply chain challenges that have echoed throughout the entire manufacturing industry, um, drones and, and far, far beyond. So at this point, uh, our team is around 110 staff globally at Quantum Systems with nearly 20 additional roles being recruited and onboarded right now. So finally, a, a look at the Quantum Systems vertical takeoff and landing, surveying and mapping drone, the Trinity F90+. Plus. So we'll certainly get into a few technical details of this system in the next slides. However, I really want to highlight just three things about this system that I think you'll find 
intriguing straight away. So if you really remember only three things about our chat here today, these would be uh, these would be a pretty good starting point. For most, Trinity has a really amazing vertical takeoff and landing capability. So in the image on the right, you can notice that the motors are pointed vertically there. This is the orientation for takeoff when the drone raises vertically then the motors automatically tilt forward and then bring the Trinity into forward flight. So for landing, this all happens, of course, in reverse order, where the drone will be out doing its, its mapping mission and then approach the, the landing point and then transition the motors from horizontal back into vertical. And then the Trinity lands in copter mode completely vertically and, and completely automatically. So second is that Trinity is extremely efficient in flight. So this helps to survey really, really large areas, which we'll get into a little bit later, or really in a relatively short amount of time. Third, Trinity offers absolute best in class sensor capability. So we've worked with all of the best in breed payload technology and integrated their systems into our vertical takeoff and landing drone. And all of our payloads are fully plug and play and completely PPK capable. Trinity is an extremely capable system. So now we'll dive a little bit deeper into those specific capabilities. So back to the payload topic, we have around seven configurations right now, including 42 megapixel, red, green, blue, RGB, 20 megapixel RGB, uh, LIDAR, multispectral, thermal, and even more options uh, that will be announced in the next few weeks. So be sure to check back with us to hear the latest and greatest things that are on the horizon for us uh, as far as payloads. So all of our sensors are true one button swaps, meaning that you can land the Trinity, click just one button to remove the, the current sensor, and then swap in your next one and, and really air within just a, a few moments time. So being able to change payloads or sensors out in the field without any uh, without the need for any tools um, is is definitely a capability that I highly recommend if you're out there searching and, and trying to understand which drone solution uh, that's on the market could be a, an interesting one for for you all to consider. So, also coverage is is such a key topic in thinking about your overall productivity with this system, and then eventually, of course, your return on the system which always varies based on quite a few different things, uh, but overlap and altitude are, are definitely always important ones. So in one flight, you can cover roughly 700 acres with the Cube 240 LiDAR scanner. This would be at the altitude of roughly 280 feet above the ground level and 40% lateral overlap. On the RGB side, you can cover around 620 acres per flight with the RX1 R2 42 megapixel camera. And this is at 400 feet above the ground level with 70% overlap. So this altitude would give you a pixel resolution on the ground of roughly 0.6 inches. Moving on to capacity. So we provide every Trinity with a charger that works with both AC and DC inputs. So this means that you can easily charge out in the field if you happen to run out of battery. Uh, there's a place for up to three batteries in each flight case. So already with the kit, you have between three and four and a half hours of flight before you have to go back to that charger to, to top off any of your batteries. Moving on to leading on. So we develop the autopilot for Trinity in-house at Quantum Systems and also develop all of the software. So this means that you have the benefit of the absolute best possible control of your aircraft as we own the process as the manufacturer and developer from the complete beginning all the way to the end. As a manufacturer, this gives us the advantage of hardware independence from additional unnecessary third parties. On to a few technical highlights of the Trinity surveying and mapping drone. So you can see uh, that the, the outer portion of the drone is built from ruggedized foam that provides just the right amount of flexibility in the airframe. This foam surrounds the carbon fiber frame that the, the drone is actually built around. And in a few slides, you'll see an image showing how the drone breaks down or disassembles into a relatively small carrying case. 
Trinity has flight modes like advanced train following, meaning that the drone will actually raise or lower its height while we're at collecting data. So this is important, uh, obviously, not only for mission safety and making sure that you have the right height above obstacles, but also for optimizing the resolution or the ground sampling of your dis of your um, of your imagery across an entire site, right? Which is really important for for final data quality. Flight time is another category where Trinity shines, and of course, it's it's uh, intertwined pretty heavily with that coverage conversation. But flights with Trinity range anywhere from sixty to ninety minutes, depending on which payload you have installed. So some examples on the extreme side are RGB payloads are uh, are sort of on the lighter side of the cameras that you could install into the Trinity. So that would be on the 90 minute flight time. And then our LiDAR scanner, the Cube 240, is definitely on the heavier side of all of the different payload options. So that brings you closer to, to kind of that 60 minute flight time mark. So that's the that's the range that you could expect depending on which camera or which sensor you have installed. And then finally, once airborne and on its mission, the Trinity is cruising right at around 38 miles per hour, which is quite quick. Um, yet another reason that the Trinity can cover so much area per flight. Three more quick technical highlights of the Trinity system. So the wind tolerance uh, during cruise mode is right at 27 miles per hour. The operating temperature range of the Trinity is all the way down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit and all the way up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And the maintenance schedule is something pretty interesting. So every 10 flights, we recommend that you uh, do a pretty, pretty over the aircraft. We provide this procedure where you inspect everything and, and make sure that everything is uh, still in good working condition. And then every three to 400 flight hours, we recommend an overhaul of the motors, the servos, and the air data sensor, that, that airspeed sensor, to make sure that your Trinity is always in top condition. Here are a few things that, that we hear from our clients time and time again after they've brought Trinity into their operation and, and gotten these points based on uh, feedback from our customers, right? Really il illustrate uh, the value that Trinity brings to, to their operation. So first and foremost is definitely this concept of precision without the price. We um, send every Trinity out the door of our headquarters in Munich, Germany, um, that in a way that it's PPK capable and PPK ready, right? So um, you have all the hardware that you need, you have all the licenses and, and everything that you would need to go out, fly your Trinity, and then uh, provide some type of correction data uh, whether it's a Rhinex from a local base or core station, and and really, really easily without any hassles, um, do a PPK workflow or precision workflow on that to, to write your precise geotags to those image files. So customers also definitely appreciate our, appreciate our network. And of course, Duncan Parnell is a, probably the shining example of this, right? Um, our customers appreciate having really local knowledge and local expertise over really all aspects of this system, whether it's um, first questions, trainings, um, support, uh, application questions, uh, our customers and, and the members of the Quantum family take a lot of comfort in the fact that, that we have partnered with the absolute best geospatial companies in North America to help make sure that this solution works for them. Moving down to airspace management, so we also send every single Trinity F90 Plus with ADS-B in capability. So what that means for somebody who's out flying the drone is that they can take the ADS-B module out of the box, plug it into their laptop that's being used to run the flight monitoring and flight planning software, which is again called Cubase 3D. And in real time, that operator would be able to see on their computer screen the location and altitude of any aircraft, man air area that are transmitting ADSB signals. So this is a really useful sort of situational uh, intelligence tool or situational awareness tool that helps operators understand what's going on them, um, what's happening in the airspace, really uh, sort of warning or signal um, as possible if they might need to adapt the mission or keep keep their eye on some type of manned aircraft out there when they're flying their drone. 
Also, twilight flight, little trinity with anti-collision lights that are a really easy magnetic mount onto both the body of the drone and the upper and lower sides of the wings. So if you're flying in sort of low light conditions and, and for safety reasons uh, or regulatory ones, you think that the anti-collision lights uh, should be used, you can just quickly clip them onto the drone, um, activate them and, and uh, fly them around and, and your drone will have great visibility in those low light conditions. Um, on the other, other end of the spectrum, if you're flying and uh, it's bright out, you think that this operation doesn't need anti-collision lights, you can leave them stowed in the case and there's no need to, to fly them ar around on the drone and, and make the system heavier. Um, you can just leave them packed away for next time. And definitely last but not least, this is really tied to one of those first things that we mentioned on this slide uh, in our network. So customers also take a lot of confidence in the fact that in addition to that local expertise um, that you'll have access to via Duncan Parnell, uh, we also provide access to our support team, which is um, the expert team in Germany that can help with any type of questions about uh, applications or data processing or flight planning that might pop up uh, in the future. So it's, it's really a, a great resource for, for you all. So now a closer look at the Quantum Systems Q240 LiDAR scanner. So Quantum has always been a company that, that really pushes the limits. And this is how we ended up with a drone that offers great flight time and also the, the best uh, saleable, right? So when we decided to bring a LiDAR scanner to the Trinity vertical takeoff and landing drone, we partnered with Yellow Scan, which is a global leader in LiDAR design and manufacturing. So Yellowscan is a, is a really awesome company that has taken the LiDAR market by storm over uh, roughly the, the last 10 years. So the result of that partnership between Yellowscan and Quantum Systems uh, was, was really the, the world's big VTOL LiDAR solution. So three things uh, that the Cube240 LiDAR scanner accomplishes really well is definitely a perfect balance uh, and it is balanced, right, between system weight, data quality, and coverage per flight. Secondly, um, absolutely leading software flexibility, especially in being able to leverage a Planix POS pack, which is yet another leader in global positioning, and, and work just a little bit more on that later. Uh, and finally, uh, the ability to switch your drone from high resolution RGB, just for example, to a survey grade LiDAR scanner in, in just a few minutes uh, while in the field with, without the need for any tools as mentioned. So now a few specs on the Cube240 LiDAR scanner itself to, to explain to you a little bit more clearly those capabilities. So the suggested flight altitude with the scanner is right around 330 feet above the ground level. I usually fly anywhere from uh, roughly 250 feet all the way up to that 330 feet above ground level, depending on what it is that I'm trying to get done and what my goals for, for that particular flight are. So system vision is around two centimeters and accuracy is just under three centimeters. The point density at 328 feet is right around nine points per square foot. Sensor is capable of up to three returns per individual shot. So moving over to the software side, you'll be plugged in with yellow scan software called CloudStation. So this includes unlimited processing rather than a, a pay as you go model. And for the trajectory correction of the scanner, uh, you'll use a Planix POS pack. The inertial system inside Q240 is the APX15, which is definitely a top of the line system and, and really the most accurate one that we could pack into this really relatively small payload. Here you can have a look at how the Q240 LiDAR and its accessories pack into a relatively small Pelican carry case. So each Q240 comes with the APX15, as mentioned before, and then uh, a directly connected Trimble GNSS antenna and two removable flash drives in addition to some of those other accessories that you see there. So this is a really nice transport solution to protect your investment and keep the equipment from being bumped. 
But if that ever does happen, if, if things get bumped in shipping or transport, we can pretty easily provide you a new calibration file for you to use your, during your processing that accounts for any, um, any of those physical changes that during, um, during hard shipping or transport bumps. And finally, to, to kind of summarize a, a few of these things that we've covered about this solution and pull things together, we have Trinity and Cubase working together on the quantum system side. Trinity is the vehicle that you can count on to carry your sensor, which is fully powered by our in-house flight control software, Cubase. You have the payload itself, which is definitely based on industry-leading partnerships. And then you have the software side and Cloud Station and Aplanix Pospec. So with these software packages, you'll be able to uh, do correction, perform strip adjustments, and export really in, in whatever format might be needed, whether it's a surface, a LAS file, LAZ um, or LAZ. So all of these different pieces are, are working together to, to provide you a solution that fits well with your existing workflows. So uh, thanks for your attention during those few slides. Uh, at this time, I'll pass the controls over to Miles, who will show you some, some real world examples um, of, of LiDAR data that were collected with the Q240 LiDAR scanner and the Trinity F90 Plus. Um, make Miles here the presenter. Bear with me one moment. All right, Miles, I've I've made you the presenter. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Daniel, for for the overview on the the system itself and also the lidar scanner and the capabilities. Uh, so what I've got pulled up in front of me now is a uh, roughly a 400 acre site that actually Daniel and I were, were able to fly together a few months ago, uh, about an hour and a half south of the Atlanta area down in Georgia. Uh, this was a, a client that I've, I've known for years and uh, they do a lot of work and their their key turnaround is 24 to 48 hours for deliverable, you know, each and every time they go fly a site. So they wanted to evaluate, you know, uh, the quantum Trinity F90 plus with Q240 LiDAR to see, you know, what type of area they could cover in a single battery and if that would fit into their workflow and turnaround time that they guarantee for their customers. Uh, as Daniel was mentioning earlier about the, the different softwares that kind of uh, go in place uh, and, and work together to get to your last file, so your point cloud data. Um, you know, for, for example, you do your mission planning in, in Cubase. Uh, once the mission is flown, you would then bring your uh, trajectory data, so your IMU information and the POS pack. Uh, then once the, your trajectory is processed and merged with your data for in Cloud Station to create your LAS file, you can then bring that LAS file into whatever software that you're currently utilizing to manipulate point cloud data. Uh, for us on the Duncan Parnell side, you know, we use Trimble Business Center. And so what I have in front of me right now is Trimble Business Center with the point cloud from the site that I mentioned uh, pulled up in front. So what I just wanna do here first is just kind of uh, gradually show you, you know, kind of the density uh, that this site had as far as the vegetation. It's some pretty dense stuff, as you can see, you know, and as an example, I know uh, the client told us that this was probably at 30 days, you know, on site uh, if they were to go by, based off traditional methods uh, for, for surveying. But the, the Trinity was able to fly this 400 acres in just under 40 minutes. And in the same afternoon, uh, not only did you have the point cloud data, but also a uh, classified point cloud which now I'll strip away the vegetation from this and show the surface that's underneath. And all of that is an automated procedure uh, that is built into uh, the yellow scan cloud station software. So I was able to pre-classify this point cloud before I brought it into Trimble Business Center.
then of course from our uh, classified point cloud data. You can go in and then create a, a surface model based off of that. And again, you know, the, the, the biggest advantage to the system, you know, just speaking in real world terminology here is this. It's not just this ability to cover very large area in a single flight It's uh, at the consistency and the repeatability that it also offers. Um, I mean, each and every time that I've showed up somewhere to fly the system, it works just like it did beforehand. Um, and when you count, uh, when you combine that with the overall flight speed, of uh, roughly 40 miles an hour while it's collecting LIDAR data. It's just the, the sheer amount of data that can be collected even over a smaller site, because now you have the ability to do cross hatch missions and uh, collect denser data for every project that you're flying, um, while also having the benefits of VTOL and being able to take off in more confined areas that fixed wings typically aren't able to do so. Um, so, I believe it's a, an incredible system. Uh, that's why Duncan Parnell signed on to distribute the product. Um, and folks like Daniel that are just tremendous resources uh, that exist over there at Quantum is, is unparalleled in the industry, uh, in my opinion. So um, for, I reckon for this uh, point going forward, if, if anybody's got any questions uh, on the system of any sort, just please feel free to put them into the chat. Um, I just wanted to show this quick example of the data to kind of give everyone an idea uh, of what can be done in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, but yeah, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Daniel, in the, in the meantime, I'll wait to see if there's any questions that pop up. Is there is there anything that uh, you know that you've seen folks ask you in the, in the field, or you know anything that you think could resonate uh, above others or above all yeah, else? Definitely, one one thing that comes up uh, pretty frequently once we start getting into to the nitty gritty um, of of flying RGB data is uh, just to understand. Uh, why would we choose something like a 42 megapixel, just relatively high resolution camera, right? Versus uh, something else that we offer in uh, roughly a 20 megapixel camera. Um, so there's definitely gives and takes on both sides, right? So uh, on the advantages side for the, the higher resolution, the 42 megapixel camera, um, definitely you can have much better ground sampling distance at, at a given altitude, right? So what I mentioned before is that if you're flying at roughly 400 feet above the ground, you can have, uh, um, you know, six tenths of an inch um, pixels on the ground, right? So that's a relatively high altitude to fly a drone at while you're still getting a, a relatively um, good resolution on the ground, right? So, so that's the advantage, um, but on the disadvantage side, right? Um, you don't always need for application out there um, really, really, really high resolution data. So um, it can be challenging to go out and, and collect, you know, many thousands of images uh, that are all 42 megapixel resolution, right? So that data starts. Uh, and, and in those cases where you really don't need um, super, super precise results, you don't need all that crazy resolution. That's when I see people step into something like a 20 megapixel camera that still gives them a, a really good overview of the area. You can make all those ortho mosaics. You can make lots of uh, all your 3D outputs, point clouds and surfaces and things. Uh, but the, the image size is just a little bit more manageable as well. And then um, sort of the, the last thought there on the 20 megapixel camera. Uh, so the, the field of view on that sensor is wider than the, the 42 megapixel camera, which means that you can actually um, survey or actually fly 
um, large areas a, a bit more rapidly with that camera because the, the flight lines themselves at a given altitude are further apart uh, due to that wider field of view. So you can maintain the same overlap uh, but cover areas a bit more quickly at, at of course, kind of the expense of, of lower resolution. So that's something that, that comes up pretty, pretty often when people are um, sort of building out their camera configuration and, and figuring out, okay, maybe we'll go with, um, maybe we'll start out with the Cube 240 LiDAR and then also add in an, an RGB sensor. Uh, so we see people go through that quite a bit. You know, and also, you know, uh, one thing that maybe you could elaborate a little bit on also is the uh, the advanced terrain follow module, uh, you know, that, that's built in and how how that's kind of, you know, separates itself a little bit compared to others, you know, because I've personally been very impressed with this terrain follow capability, um, especially having flown in some mountainous uh, regions as well and it being able to provide a very consistent GSD. Uh, I think that's been a very, pretty awesome feature. Definitely. So ad advanced terrain following to me, um, as somebody who's flown a lot of the, the different systems, both fixed wing and, and not that are out there, is something that, that still really shines, uh, shines out in, in my opinion. Um, so actually this data set that, um, that Miles showed, and maybe I can even share my screen again um, so you all can see it. Um, I know, but then we'd have to change the presenter. So if you remember back to um, I'll get it up here. Bear with me one moment. All right, so yeah, you can you can see the screen again. Um, so um, with this data set, it's the screenshots of the same one that that Miles had shown there. Um, we used advanced terrain following um, because, as you can see, there's there's quite a bit of relief, and and um, the trees aren't super super tall, but they're they're relatively tall, right? So we wanted to. Uh, essentially get as low as we could with the LiDAR scanner to get good density and, and good penetration through the vegetation, but obviously also uh, maintain a safe offset between the Trinity and, and any obstacles on the ground. So some systems that are out there will use terrain following, right, um, in the sense that each, each individual line that the drone is flying to collect its survey data on would be a different altitude, right? But it's it's not actually changing its altitude while it's um, collecting pictures or while it's scanning LiDAR data. But the Trinity is a little bit different in that it offers that advanced terrain following that Miles mentioned. So you can, um, you can have the Trinity going up and down a long track, right? While it's out collecting its data, uh, which is really a game changer in the ability to get as low to the ground as you, as you might want to with something like a LiDAR scanner while also maintaining a, a really safe distance between your drone and, and any obstacles that are out there. So by default, uh, we use um, a relatively low resolution elevation model um, that's built into Cubase 3D. So the, the drone um, is able to do this without you um, importing any custom elevation data. And this covers anywhere between, I would say 90 and 95% of uh, terrain following situations or terrain following flights that are out there. Um, for the remaining few percentage, um, maybe you have something like a, like a mine where the elevation on the ground is, is changing really rapidly, or perhaps you're, you're flying in mountainous regions like Miles mentioned, where you would really want a, a as high resolution elevation model for your flight planning as, as possible. In those cases, you can just grab um, a, a DEM elevation model from any source that's updated that you can get your hands on and just really quickly import that into Cubase 3D. And uh, then straight away, your, all your flight plans um, are, are considering that, that custom elevation data. So sort of the, the right level of flexibility uh, while also considering convenience of not having to always import elevation data to do your train following. So. And Daniel, I don't know if you saw, but we did have a question come through in the chat. Um, is the unit modular, meaning exchangeable sensors, both passive and active? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So the this was is extremely modular. So um, first, like on the drone side, the wings come off uh, the the main fuselage, the tail separates from the main fuselage, and the elevator unclips also from uh, from the tail section. So everything is modular in this sense. Uh, relatively easy for transport and storage, right? 
um, which also has some pretty important maintenance and repair implications. So if somebody needs just a left wing or somebody needs um, just a, a tail for whatever reason, we can go ahead and, and get those uh, items shipped out, get them dispatched, um, and, and get that person on their way relatively quickly rather than actually having to send the entire drone in for some type of lengthy repair when it's really just like uh, like a wing or something uh, that, that needs some attention. So definitely modular um, in that sense for storage and, and maintenance. And then also on the payload side, um, what you can see there on the, on the screen is uh, the Q240 LiDAR, which is built into to that little compartment that you saw in previous slides. So those payloads are modular in the sense um, that, you know, it's a one button swap, change it out. Um, you can move really through any sensors out in the field that you would need to. Maybe you'll start out with RGB and, and move into LiDAR. Maybe it's uh, something a little bit different like multispectral and, and LiDAR as well. So def definitely um, a very, very modular system from, from a few different perspectives. Uh, thanks, Daniel, for uh, elaborating on all of that. Yeah, sure thing. Well, from from my side at, at this moment, I don't really have anything additional, um, you know, to add. Um, if if, uh, if you have anything else, Daniel, before we we close out, please feel free um, to discuss it. But otherwise, we can um, get this closed up here. Yeah, from, from my side, we definitely touched on everything that, that I had hoped to. Um, so yeah, really, again, appreciate all of you that were able to, to join the webinar today. And uh, definitely for, for any questions, please feel free to, to reach out to Miles, give me a shout. We'll be really happy to, to be in touch and, and chat with you.